Alright, this time let's hit the above average job. For, for example, either a pharmacist or any of the category like accountant, finance, teacher who work for a long time to make the same money as a pharmacist. You start off at 60000 and then you're going to go up to 100000 That's four times more than letter or no education, which was the 24000 In return, however, in order to get that much money, you have to put out a lot of effort. For example, you need four years degree, then you need two to four years more for your master, and then an additional two to four years more for your doctoral. So that's the pharmacist right there. Or if you were in the business or teaching, then you need the additional two years for your credential or license, and then at least six years of work to raise your um, income from bottom up towards the uh, $100,000. Yeah, that's a lot of work, but in return, you get a lot of stuff to spend on. For example, you can get this for your transportation. But wait, don't let it stop you. With the extra money you have, you can get some more transportation stuff if you're not much into spending for a home and stuff. And then for a house, you have a pretty above average house that includes like a two-story or three garage door. A pretty good place to live. The inside would be very comfy and plenty of space. One of those big fancy couch with a nice flat screen TV. And for clothing, when you go to the mall with your boyfriend or girlfriend, you can totally hit these kind of stores. And for entertainment, you can get these kind of systems. That's just the beginning. Oh, don't forget the, pla the flat screen TV, of course. So you see, education does pay off. Okay, now let's talk about the rare one, the neurosurgeon. Not that many people can reach this level because either they're afraid of blood or it's going to take a really, really long time. But the pace is really good. First of all, you start off with 300000 That's just minimum to start with. Then you can go up to 500000 That's about average right there. And then you can go up as much as a million depending on how well you do. It's going to take over 11 years after your PhD plus training and all this stuff so probably 20 something years of schooling after high school <laughs> that's a long time and not to mention during your work you have to be brave because you're gonna be facing with all those stuff and you most likely have to be single because you're never gonna be home and then in return you just get stuff like this Yeah, not most of us going to reach that level, so, but it's, you know, it's nice to know that, right? Okay, so um, we had our fun about the neuro and stuff, so let's go back to our neuron. Cells of the nerve system communicate with electrical and chemical signals. Electrical, because, you know, electricity travels really fast. So in order for you to do anything, your brain must communicate with the rest of your body at a very quick rate. We're talking fast, like about 120 meter per second. That's how fast the signal travels from your brain to whatever part of your body. The chemical part of the communication occurs at the synapse. The synapse is where the end of the axons of one nerve cell meets the dendrite of the other nerve cell. So basically that's how they communicate. Nerve cells can't just do electrical all the way because what happens to when you have like a long neuron or long nerve cells and then it's electrical? Over time, the electricity is going to start slowly fading away. Electricity loses strength over time. So that's why what happens is the nerve cell is designed with lots of small neuron. It's going to send electrical, then it converts to chemical, then back to electrical and chemical. This way it can keep the electrical at full strength. Here you are looking at a synapse, the, uh, the axon terminal of one nerve cells with the uh, dendrite of a or another nerve cell. At the tip you have tiny vesicle that carries the neurotransmitter. It will go to the outside of the axon terminal through the membrane and then the message is going to jump across and hits the uh, dendrite of the other nerve cells. So this is chemical and it occurs at the synapse. So in our body, we have millions and millions of tiny nerve cells. It would sound nice to have one large nerve cell, but 
first of all, as mentioned earlier, there could be a loss of the electric strength. As the electricity travels down a neuron, the strength of the electricity is going to weaken over time if it's not re-energized. So if any damage would happen to that one large neuron, then it would totally be destroyed. Having a bunch of tiny neurons, if any damage were to be occur, it can find alternative routes.